Philippines. So thank you so much for all being here, for making my my first trip home such a memorable one. Catriona Gray back in the Philippines after winning the two Miss Universe crown in Bangkok, Thailand. Prices of several holiday items soar but still within the range of the Consumer Price Guide according to the Department of Trade and Industry. But they are instructed to buy from the local farmers, not to import. Kasi minsan yung ating uh, Secretary of Agriculture, eh, hindi ko maintindihan, malinaw na malinaw po ang batas na pareho pa rin ang budget ng NFA Pero pinagbawalan na silang mag-import. Gusto ng uh, gobyerno, bibili na lang sila sa local farmer. And uh, Senator Cynthia Villar clarifies that the low price rice will still be available in local markets even with the enactment of the rice tarification bill. Good evening. Miss Universe 2018 Catriona Gray returns home after successfully taking the crown in the prestigious international beauty pageant. However, Gray's scam clarifies that a beauty queen will only be here in Manila for a short while. JL Asayo tells us why. The newly crowned queen wearing an all-white ensemble, a pair of pearl earrings and long hair down one side ear topped, arrived in the country on Wednesday afternoon after besting 93 other beauties from around the world last Monday in Thailand. The private jet carrying 24-year-old Gray landed around 3.30 p.m. at Platinum Skies Aviation Incorporated in Pasay City. Her companions in the three-hour flight from Bangkok to Manila include the owner of the Gulfstream jet, Chavit Singson, her daughter, architect, Richelle Louise Singson Michael, who also served as a judge in the recently concluded international pageant, members of the Miss Universe organization, and other media personalities, some of the kids she has helped through the Tondo-based non-government organization, Young Focus Philippines, warmly welcomed Gray as she walked towards the VIP lounge. Fans and members of the media also lined up to welcome her back. Gray gave a brief message at the lounge shortly after her arrival. So happy to be home. So happy to be back in the Philippines. So thank you so much for all being here, for making my my first trip home such a memorable one. Meanwhile, Gray is expected to pay a courtesy call to President Rodrigo Duterte according to Malacanang. However, there are no details provided yet on its schedule. Hindi ko lang alam specific date. But the Secretary of Tourism, Berna said, definitely courtesy call. The palace has sent its congratulatory message to Gray for her victory at the Miss Universe pageant. Her camp, however, clarifies the beauty queen is just in Manila for a brief visit. Her homecoming event to be highlighted by a traditional parade this month still in the works. She was given time to spend the holidays with her loved ones before she travels to the Miss Universe Organization headquarters in New York, USA to formally start her duties in January 2019. Gray is set to live in New York for the duration of her reign. JL Asayo, UNTV News & Rescue, Pasay City. Prices of holiday products have increased but according to the Department of Trade and Industry, they are still within the suggested retail price. Monoxon tells us why. The Department of Trade and Industry conducted a price monitoring inspection to check on the price of holiday items. DTI noticed that many holiday products in supermarkets are still within the suggested retail price, although they're a bit higher compared to that of last year. Still, several manufacturers have decided not to increase their prices due to market competition. A significant number of items are even 3 to 6 pesos cheaper than the SRP. Yung mga nagtataas ng presyo, it's their lookout, it's the manufacturer's lookout kasi market share nila yung nababawasan. Recently, some manufacturers of products such as mayonnaise, ham and tomato sauce applied to increase their price. While some retained and cut their prices of goodies such as pasta, some brands of ham, fruit cocktail and cheese. The DTI assures that there will be enough supply of holiday products that are within the SRP and prices will retain until next year. The agency added that there are many choices that can help consumers decide what product to buy. Mas nakakaano ka kasi may mga pre bawat item. Yes sir. Kasi para sir para may dagdagman lang. Ano kasi sa hirap ng 
Ang sweldo magkano lang? Dati po, mahal. Ngayon, medyo ano na po, bumaba, konti. Meanwhile, NFA Rice have run out of stock in a supermarket in Manila. The store manager said NFA Rice are being bought in bulk because of its cheap price. 300 sacks yun, na 300 na 25 kilos. So wala naman pong advice sa amin. Wala naman pong advice sa amin na nag-limit kami sa benta. Basta nag-display po kami. The Trade and Industry Department warns rice retailers against buying in bulk. Kumuha sila ng bigas na hindi naman sa ganitong... Ganitong programa dahil yung programa natin na to para sa mga kababayan natin na makat makatulong tayo na magkaroon sila ng murang bigas. The DTI also advises consumers to take advantage of grocery bundles and promo items to save money. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Consumers are appealing for a continuous supply of NFA rice as the enactment of rice tarification bill looms. Ray Pelayo tells us why. Consumers are asking the government to retain the supply of the low-priced rice of the National Food Authority in local markets even after the passage of the proposed Rice Tarification Act. Carmen Sita Aseri says her household consumes up to 84 kilograms of rice a month. Prevailing retail price of regular milled rice in Metro Manila markets nowadays is 39 pesos per kilogram according to data from the Philippine Statistics Authority. Carmen Sita says buying NFA rice at 27 per kilogram helps her save 12 pesos a kilogram or a clear 1,000 pesos big savings for her tight budget in a month. Yung matitipid mo dito, pwede na rin yung narin pang ano, bili mo ng ulam, yung, eh, kahit itlog, ganoon. Alan Pabustan, also a patron of NFA Rice, shares the same sentiments as Carmen Sita and other patrons of low price NFA Rice. Malaking kawalan din. Kumaga malaking tulong sa amin ng NFA. Uh, Siyempre, mura. On Tuesday, the Department of Agriculture expressed concern over the possible removal of NFA Rice in local markets once the proposed Tarification Act is enacted into law. Under the proposed legislation, the NFA's regulatory and importation power will be removed and the agency's function will only be limited to buffer stocking. Also, the agency will no longer import rice and it will only buy the local farmer's yield. But according to the Agriculture Group Samahang Industria ng Agricultura, the NFA can still supply rice to local markets even without the subsidy coming from the government. Exploration ng MEDA sa amin, doon sa Senate, uh hearing sa Committee on Agriculture, yung presyo ng palay, eh, kung totoo, dahil doon sa importation, magiging 17 pesos, pwede pa rin magbenta ng 27 pesos na bigas. The proposed act also provides 10 billion peso fund for farmers' subsidy, which can be used to help lower production costs while increasing farmers' yield. But a consumer group argues that farmers cannot hold on yet to the rice subsidy plan because the government has no existing fund for the program. Nabasa ko yung final bill na inapog ng Bicam. Wala naman sinabing aabonohan ng gobyerno yung 10 billion eh. Ang hindi ko, kukunin pa yan 10 billion doon sa mga buwis na ibabayad ng mga importers. Meanwhile, the proposed Rice Tarification Act is just awaiting the signature of President Rodrigo Duterte. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo believes that once the bill becomes a law, consumers can expect much lower price of rice in the market. Pag ni-liberalize mo naman, eh, magkakaroon ng competition in the market. So, magpapababa sila ng presyo. Otherwise, hindi sila mabibili. Diba? Kaya nga, law of supply and demand yan. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. Senate Committee on Agriculture and Food Chairperson Cynthia Villar clarifies that the supply of cheaper rice will still be available in local markets even with the enactment of the rice tarification bill in to law. Here's why from Aiko Miguel. Senator Cynthia Villar allays fears that the cheaper rice supplied by the National Food Authority in local markets will no longer be available once the rice tarification bill has been signed and implemented. Villar, who chairs the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Food and the primary author of the bill, clarifies that the proposed measure only removes the NFA's regulatory and importation power and limits its functions to buffer stocking. The lawmaker made the clarification in response to the concern raised by Agriculture Secretary Mari Pinol about the possible removal of NFA rice in local markets once the rice certification bill is enacted into law. 
Ang uh, NFA po, ang budget nila the same. But they are instructed to buy from the local farmers, not to import. Kasi minsan yung ating uh, Secretary of Agriculture, eh, hindi ko maintindihan, malinaw na malinaw po ang batas na pareho pa rin ang budget ng NFA pero pinagbawalan na silang mag-import. Gusto ng uh, gobyerno, bibili na lang sila sa local farmer. Under the proposed bill, the quantitative restrictions on rice imports will be lifted, requiring private firms to pay tariffs in order to import rice stocks. The excess rice tariff revenues and the 10 billion peso fix appropriation for the rice fund would be released to the Department of Agriculture and would be used for providing direct financial assistance to rice farmers as compensation for the projected reduction or loss of farm income arising from the tariffication. We foresee na pag ang uh, private ang nag-import ay uh, magmumura ang bigas kasi hindi makokontrol ng ilan lamang, kundi it's open to everybody. Villar notes the bill is very specific in providing preferential attention to rice farmers, cooperatives and associations that are seen to be adversely affected by the tarification. The Congressional Bicameral Conference Committee has ratified the bill last November and is awaiting the signature of President Rodrigo Duterte. Aiku Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Thousands of teachers march through downtown Los Angeles to express their demands. That includes a pay raise, smaller class sizes and more nurses and counselors. Calvin Manaig tells us why. Union members of the Los Angeles Uniform School District in California take the streets downtown to call for wage hike and to protest cuts in funding distribution in the city's public school system. Thousands of teachers rallied to demand for higher pay following inflation adjustment, claiming that they have yet to receive a salary hike in three years. School workers are also demanding smaller class sizes, more school funding, and additional full-time nurses and librarians. LA educators say class sizes have increased to 35 to 40 students from the previous 25 to 30 students per class ratio. Each school in the district also has one nurse on duty to cater to hundreds of students. Our class sizes have been getting bigger and uh, we haven't been getting the resources we need. I teach world and U.S. history and um, our textbooks, we haven't uh, received new textbooks. We're protesting um, to have a school nurse in each school every day. Since uh, we've been working one, um, many nurses, we have uh, three assignments. So once a week, which is not enough for the, the school and the kids. The teachers' union has threatened to launch a possible strike in the upcoming months to protest the alleged privatization of the public school system in the city and if the district doesn't meet their demands. There are two things happening. One is there's a, a great move to try and privatize education, to take it away from the public domain. And so they are cutting the resources for public education and trying to transfer them to private. Teacher walkouts this year have already occurred in the states of West Virginia and Arizona to ask lawmakers to adequately pay teachers and fund schools. These protests have resulted to pay raise following days of class suspension. There are a total of 1.4 million Filipinos in California and over 460,000 are here in Los Angeles. Students, parents, and union allies state they too will strike if their teachers do to support their appeal for better public school system, which they say is gradually being pulled to privatization causing a segregation among well-off and poor students. Calvi Manaig, UNTV News and Rescue, Los Angeles, USA. Wishers may now vote for their favorite wish exclusive performances and artists. Leslie Lungboen tells us why. Wish 107.5 has released the nominees for the 4th Wish Music Awards. The awards recognize the Wish-exclusive performances and artists that stood out throughout the year. Categories include Wish Artist of the Year, Wish Group of the Year, and Wish Promising Artist of the Year. The other categories focus on different genres of the performances. 
Special recognitions include Wishclusive Viral Video of the Year and Wishclusive Elite Circle. Nominees meanwhile react on social media and thank Wish for its appreciation. The fourth Wish Music Awards cover Wish Clusives that were rendered from November 1, 2017 to October 31, 2018. Meanwhile, the online voting is now open for Wishers via WMA website, Wish app, or Wish YouTube channel. Winners will be determined through the votes of Wishers and a panel of judges. Polling period is until January 15, 2019 at 12 noon before the Wish Music Awards night at the Smart Araneta Coliseum. Wish Music Awards is an annual event of Wish 1075 that does not only pay tribute to great talent but also aims to help by donating to the winner's chosen beneficiaries. Leslie Lumboan, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Up next on Y News. The Philippine National Police monitors party events this holiday season for party drugs and marijuana vapes. President Rodrigo Duterte believes there is no need to issue a warrant for the capture of communist rebels. And uh, find out why some Australians are disputing Miss Universe 2018 Catriona Grace win. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of Y News. More reasons behind the stories with William Theo after this quick break. I'm Rina Villamora Camara. Good evening. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up to where Rina Villamor Camara left off. I am William Theo, and here are the headlines. The Manila Metropolitan Development Authority defers the implementation of higher illegal parking fines to January 7, 2019. The Duterte administration hopes for a friendlier Congress next year. And the Philippine National Police keeps tight watch on merry makings this holiday season. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority is set to increase the penalty for illegal parking. The new policy is supposed to take effect today, but the agency deferred it to January 2019. Joe Anano tells us why. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority announces it will increase the penalty for illegal parking. Under the MMDA Regulation No. 18-008, the new penalty matrix raises the penalty from the previous 200 pesos to 1,000 pesos for attended illegally parked vehicles or those with drivers on board. For unattended illegally parked vehicles, the penalty has been raised from the previous 500 pesos to 2,000 pesos. The penalty on obstruction of traffic has also been raised to 1,000 pesos from 150 pesos, while violators of the yellow lane policy will be fined with 1,000 pesos from the previous 300 to 500 pesos. Under the new regulation, drivers of illegally parked vehicles can be issued with a violation ticket twice in a day. The new penalty matrix is supposed to be implemented on Wednesday. However, the agency announced it will start charging violators on January 7, 2019. According to MMDA General Manager Jose Arturo Garcia, there are certain issues that the agency needs to address before its implementation. So if you January 6 and below, Doon tayo sa dating fight. Inaayos pa namin yung system namin sa collections. Number three sa ticketing. And of course, number three, sabi nga ni Chairman, Christmas season niya, no? medyo gipit din sa pera yung mga tao. Sige, magpaliban na muna natin to. Earlier, the MMDA Special Task Force Operations Group conducted a clearing operation and issued violation tickets to several motorists who parked illegally along Edsa Balintawak and Bansalangin Roads. They were fined with higher rates for illegal parking violation. Malaki na masyado mo, eh. Eh, medyo may kahirapan kasi matagal kita yung salibo, eh. Kaya magpuposgin na lang po na matubos yung lisensya ko. Hindi, para sa amin talaga malaki yun yung salibong illegal parking na yan. Mabuti kung lahat ng mga illegal inuhuli, baka meron din namang pinipili lang yan. Katulad namin na mahihirap eh. 
Some motorists, however, are in favor of the MMDA's move. Oh, pabor naman. Kasi ano eh, uh, para mabuhasan din yung traffic kasi iba, nagpo-park na lang basta eh. Para siguro madala din sila. Oh, tama lang yun. Para uh, madisiplina lahat ng ano, driver. The MMDA hopes the penalty adjustment will instill discipline among motorists and stop illegal parking which is among the major causes of traffic congestion in Metro Manila. Joan Anu, UNTV News and Rescue, Makati City. Meanwhile, the Department of Public Works and Highways believe that the opening of the new Cavitex flyover in Paranaque would ease traffic congestion, especially this holiday season. Victor Casara explains why. The southbound flyover along the Manila Cavite Expressway has been officially opened to the public on Tuesday. Public Works and Highway Secretary Mark Villar, who led the inauguration of the flyover, said the opening is just in time to help ease the expected heavier traffic volume during the holiday season. The elevated flyover would ease the flow of vehicles along the expressway for southbound and northbound motorists coming from Cavite by turning left at Pacific Avenue in Paranaque City, which serves as the gateway to Justado Makapagal Boulevard. The new road would save motorists around 10 minutes of their time waiting for the traffic light to turn green. Dati, naiipon dito yung traffic dahil nung walang flyover, nung pa left turn yung mga kotse na galing sa south, maghihintay talaga at maiipon yung traffic. The DPWH also widened the road from three to four lanes. Villar says an average of 140,000 vehicles used the Cavitex daily. The flyover on the southbound lane on the intersection of Pacific Avenue is part of the 700 million peso phase one of the enhancement works of the Metro Pacific Tollways Corporation for Cavitex. The second phase, which would include bridge widening at Wawa Las Piña City, is set to be completed in 2019. It will involve uh, the widening of three uh, bridges, namely the Paranaque Bridge, the Wawa Bridge, and the Las Piñas Bridge. At the end of all these enhancements, we anticipate we will have 14 kilometers of widened and modern expressway in Cavite. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Duterte administration is hoping for a friendlier Congress next year as it sets to operate on a reenacted budget in the opening months of 2019 after Congress failed to pass a proposed 3.757 trillion pesos national budget. Rosa de Cos tells us why. Budget Secretary Benjamin Jokno is looking forward to dealing with a new, friendlier Congress after the midterm elections in May 2019. This is following the current Congress failure to approve the 3.757 trillion proposed budget due to allegations of pork barrel insertions. The government is set to operate on a re-enacted budget in the first few months of 2019. Jokno says they will reduce disbursements by 43.7 billion pesos in the first quarter, which would somehow affect government services. I'm hopeful that hindi na siya mangyayari kasi there's, there's going to be a new Congress. Di ba? May election tayo eh. So the midterm, uh, there will be a new Congress. Hopefully much more, uh, much friendlier than this one. Friendly naman tong Congress na to. Both chambers of Congress went on a holiday break without passing the 2019 budget proposal. The lower house transmitted the bill behind schedule while the Senate had almost completed its deliberations on budgets of various agencies except for a few major departments like the Department of Public Works and Highways and the Department of Tourism. Lawmakers recently grilled Jokno over the alleged pork barrel and other anomalies. Despite this, Malacanang remains optimistic about House Speaker Gloria Arroyo's continuous support to the Duterte administration. I'm sure it will be friendlier. It doesn't mean that the Speaker doesn't support. As they explain it, there are certain amendments that they need to scrutinize and subject the same to more review. And perhaps because of work in Congress that restricts them from passing the budget on time. Meanwhile, Jokno revealed that House Majority Floor Leader Rolando Andaya and Minority Floor Leader Danilo Suarez were among the politicians who had asked him about the status of the road users' tax. 
However, the official stood firm he will not release the road user's tax and this is also the stand of President Duterte. Marami nang lumapit sa akin. I won't name names. No? Marami nang lumapit sa akin na politiko na tinatanong yung status nga ng road user's fund na yun. Kailan marirelease and so forth. Sabi ko hindi ko i-release yan until that issue on the, on the road board is settled. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. President Rodrigo Duterte believes there is no need to issue a warrant for the capture of communist rebels. He also vows to wipe out the Reds before his term ends. Grace Cassin tells us why. President Rodrigo Duterte said there is no need to issue a warrant of arrest of the communist rebels who do continuous crime of rebellion 24 hours a day. Why do I need to have a warrant? By the fact that you are a rebel, you are a 24-hour violator of the revised penal code of rebellion. Okay, ang, pag, ang rebellion, ang crime, hindi li, mawala, matulog ka. The president said during his speech at an event in Davao City Tuesday evening that he will wipe out the communist rebels along with the drug menace in the country before his term ends. I'll just finish you off. Why? Well, if, I, if I don't do it, you go again around the community asking for money and killing them if you don't give. Pero yung, yung komunista gusto kong tapusin, pati yung droga. I want it done during my term. Peace negotiation between the Duterte administration and the Communist Party of the Philippines, New People's Army or CPP and PA, had been postponed several times until President Duterte terminated the talks in November 2017 due to the rebels' continuous attacks against government troops. The Duterte administration later on pushed for localized peace talks, but again, to no avail. This led the president's order of creating a national task force to work on ending the decade-long armed conflicts with the communist rebels. Malacanang maintained that President Duterte is not declaring a holiday truce with the rebels, even after the communist group declared a unilateral ceasefire expected to begin on December 24, 2018. Grace Gassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Magdalo Party List Representative Gary Alejano wants to conduct an investigation over the alleged trading of firearms between the armed forces of the Philippines to the terrorists. This is following the arrest of a couple who are reportedly suppliers of firearms to the Maute terrorist group. The firearms and ammunitions recovered were said to be bearing the seal of the AFP, specifically the Philippine Army. The lawmaker said he will file a resolution for an investigation on the matter at the lower house of Congress. Alejano said this is just one of the problems that pushed them then to stage a protest against the administration of former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. And the Philippine National Police is closely monitoring merrymakings and other party events this holiday season. Leia Ilagan tells us why. Party events are common this season. That's why authorities have strengthened their monitoring on merrymaking activities in the country. In particular, the Philippine National Police is focusing on proliferation of party drugs, especially in crowded places. For this reason, PNP Drug Enforcement Group Chief, Police Chief Superintendent Albert Ferro advises the public not to easily accept offers of drinks and food items from strangers. Diyan ay pwede nilang patakan ng liquid XC or other party drugs na hindi mo alam kung ano nang ginagawa mo. Pwede kang ma-rape or pwede kang uh, uh, mag, malagay sa piligro. Authorities are also monitoring activities in common party places such as bars and clubs where party drugs are commonly being traded. Mag-ingat po tayo kasi uh, instead na masaya ang ating Pasko ay mapunta tayo sa kalaboso. Aside from party drugs, the police official also warned against use of marijuana vapes. Ferro cited a police operation in December 2 in Tasmarinas, Cavite, where three suspects were arrested for selling vape marijuana. Ito po yung vials ng, uh, ng vape. So sometimes parang nasusupress yung odor niya, but uh, yung effect po ng marijuana. And we, when we tested this with the uh, crime laboratory, it 
tested of positive of cannabis or marijuana. So, ito po ay bawal sa ating bansa. The PDEG chief assures that the PNP is on high alert this holiday season against lawless elements and illegal drug syndicates. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Come Krami. The war against illegal drugs of the Duterte administration will remain relentless despite the increase in the death toll. The government has reported that 5,050 drug suspects were killed after allegedly resisting arrest since the campaign was launched in July 1st of 2016 until November 30 this year. When asked if the number is expected to rise, presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo says this would depend on the drug suspects. It depends on how those involved in drugs will respond to operations against them. They become violent, necessarily the result will be violent too. What you sow, you rip. It was a tough vocal battle for the third batch of wish coveries of Camp Junji Marcelo last night. Leslie Longboen tells us why. Choosing the one to be eliminated from the third set of Wish Coveries of Wish Covery Season 2, The Singer and the Song, was a difficult decision for composer Wish Coverer Junji Marcelo. This is because the three Wish Coveries were all competitive. Making it to the next round were Aira Asuncion. Aguilar. Gracelyn Espinesin was not able to advance to round two, but Junji left words of encouragement for her. Lynn, I hate to give you up, but I, I think, uh, given yung yung idad mo and the maturity, parang give it, give it one more year, you will be so ready that you might even win this. Marami pa namang pung um, dapat improve, tas pwede pa pong mag-improve. Uh, marami pa pong pinto ang magbubukas out there. The next to battle are wish coveries of Camp Top Suzara tonight on Wish 107.5 YouTube channel. Leslie Lomboan, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Up next on Y News. U.S. President Donald Trump bans bump stocks used in mass Las Vegas shooting. SoftBank alumni unveils affectionate companion robot in Japan. And find out why some Australians are disputing Miss Universe 2018 Catriona Gray's win. Why News will be right back after this quick break.